My flu on Qatar Airways last week with the in-laws. The food on Qatar Airways was so exotic they even had pepper. <laughs> Hi, today we're ranking all of the major Middle Eastern airlines into a tier list based off of their business class products on their wide body aircraft. Now, some of these airlines are among some of the best in the world, so expectations are high. But remember, this is my tier list, hence these are my opinions. You're more than welcome to disagree with them, either in the comments or with the unsubscribe button. All right, let's get right into it, starting off in no particular order with Emirates and their 777s. Now I like these seats, they look really good. They kind of remind me of the interior of an exotic GT car from a few years ago, but they're still very plush, very pretty. I do like these seats. I just don't particularly like how they're laid out. And it's not so much that the window seats don't have direct L access, but rather the fact that you can somehow manage to get yourself into a middle seat in business class. I just have a very hard time imagining how someone could be happy having spent thousands of dollars on a business class ticket only to be penned in by two potential strangers. I want to put this product into C tier given Emirates stellar service and food, but that still feels a little generous. So into D it goes. <laughs> Next up we have Emirates A380s, which thankfully uses a completely different product, this time with each seat having direct all access. Not only are these seats a little bit wider and bigger, but they're also a lot more private. These seats also turn into quite a comfortable bed, I'm often on their Dubai to San Francisco flights, and I'm regularly getting 6-7 to seven hours of solid sleep. On top of all of that, behind the business class cabin on the upper deck, there's also a bar. As much as it is a gimmick, it's also a really cool place to hang out. With all of that, this product definitely deserves to be an A tier, but sometimes, if you have chocolates with which to bribe them, or you're just really good at sweet talking, the crew might, might just let you into first class to take a shower. So with that, S tier. Before we go any further, a quick word from today's sponsor. So lately I've been watching the Spanish Netflix series La Casa de Papel. You might know it by its English name, Money Heist. But it has been years since I took Spanish in school, and especially with how fast Spaniards usually talk, I find myself relying on the subtitles more and more. So I thought this would be good impetus to brush up on my Spanish, and with that, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Babbel. Babbel's a very orange language learning app that piecemeals lessons into 5-16 to 16 minute chunks so you can squeeze in a lesson anywhere. La amante. It comes on an app for your phone, iPad, and of course, in your web browser. There are also live lessons that connect you to real teachers. Whether it's for business, travel, or just so you can really get into those foreign dramas, there's never not a good reason to start learning a new language. Start your language journey today by taking 60% off your Babbel subscription by using my link. Alright, getting back on track, next up we have a wild card, Egypt Air on their A330s. Yeah, this goes right into F. Uh, Alright, hear me out, Egypt Air is not all bad. There's some... Um... Okay, maybe don't hear me out, they kind of are all bad. Uh, their 787s are better though. They use the Collins Aerospace Super Diamond seats, which these days is pretty much the gold standard for any good business class seat. Are you and that's about where they peak. For, you see, food on Egypt Air can be questionable at times, and at other times, it's more so a question of whether or not you'll even get food on a six hour flight. Egypt Air is also a dry airline, which isn't a huge minus for me, not because I don't enjoy alcohol, I very much do, let's keep that very clear, but more so that I would imagine that any alcohol Egypt Air were to serve would be pretty much indistinguishable from industrial runoff. Knowing that, I want to put their Dreamliner into C tier, but we're going to have to remember that Egypt Air uses Cairo's airport, the premier worldwide destination for going to the bathroom, only to have an elderly lady attempt to sell you the password to the free public Wi-Fi. So yeah, into D tier it goes. I almost forgot that Egypt Air also flies a 777s, which unfortunately uses the same layout as Emirates 777s, 232 configuration with the dreaded middle seat. 
Unlike Emirates though, most of the cabin crew on Egypt Air seem to have contracted a severe case of hating their jobs. So that lands this aircraft in F tier. Next up, we have Gulf Air and their only wide-body aircraft, the Dreamliners. Now, if you didn't know, Gulf Air used to be the flag carrier for Bahrain, Qatar, and the UAE. But these days, the latter two have their own airlines, so the Bahraini flag is the only one you'll find on Gulf Air. Now, they have this unorthodox but weirdly fantastic business seat, once again made by Collins Aerospace, called the Apex Suites. The seats are arrayed side by side, but staggered, so even the window seats get their own little corridor to the aisle. The suites are also completely open to the ceiling, meaning you get infinite legroom. Hands down, the best business class sleeping experience, if you don't count Qatar's double beds, which we'll get to later. Gulf Air is not a dry airline. In fact, food and beverage on the small island nation's carrier is quite exceptional. I really can't praise this airline enough. It is definitely one of the hidden gems of the region. So much so that I want to put it in S tier, but alas, it goes into A. Saudia has three wide-body aircraft types, the A330, 77, and 787s. Let's establish expectations immediately by putting their shittiest aircraft, the A330s, right down into D tier. Now the seats on this aircraft actually have pretty decent leg room, if you only had a singular leg. The A330's fuselage is already comparatively quite narrow in diameter, so when you cram six abreast seating into it, it is very tight. There's really no space, no privacy, and very little chance of making it to the bathroom from a window seat, unless you're an Olympic gold medalist in gymnastics. Although their catering is somewhat mediocre, service on board the Saudi airline is actually quite decent. But good luck getting on board because every other element of the customer service just absolutely sucks. They are exceptionally good at losing your luggage and making you lose your mind by placing you on hold for 7 hours when you attempt to call their customer service numbers. Having grown up in the Riyadh, I am not exaggerating when I say that it is actually easier to go to their physical customer service locations than it is to call them, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the country has my back on that. Okay, rant over, back on track. Saudia does also have Boeing planes, and these are quite a bit better because they do use the Super Diamond seats. These are quite comfortable both to sit and sleep in, but don't expect a nightcap because just like Egypt Air, Saudi Arabian Airlines is also a dry airline. Okay, I'm gonna put the Dreamliner into C tier on account of the fact that it's a modern and sleek aircraft. And I would put the 777 into D, were it not for the fact that I flew on it quite a bit as a kid, so the nostalgia factor brings it into C. I never said that this is going to be very objective. If objectivity is what you're after, go read a Skytrax review. Next up, we have Qatar Airways. I love the way British people pronounce it. I flew on Qatar Airways last week with the in-laws. The food on Qatar Airways was so exotic they even had pepper. <laughs> Qatar Airways is so terrific. <laughs> okay, let's start with their 787s. As you'll see, Qatar operates a whole mess of different layouts for their wide-body fleet, but thankfully for the Dreamliners, the variant of the aircraft dictates the type of seat you'll find yourself in. So for the Dash 8s, they have this older seat, and for the Dash 9s, they have this newer suite with closing doors. The newer enclosed suites are definitely an improvement, but even the older seats are still very comfortable and well-designed. Food, beverage, and service in Qatar's business class is also incredible, a lot closer to what your expectations should be for first class rather than your traditional business. So with all of that said, I'm still going to put this aircraft into B tier, mostly because when you're sleeping, the legroom situation isn't that great. The A380s in the Qatari fleet uses the same seats as the smaller variant of their Dreamliners, but this time around the business class cabin is on the second deck in front of the bar. Now this bar is quite large, larger than even Emirates bars on their A380s. So I guess you could say that it sets the bar quite high. Look, I like the A380s, I like the upper deck, I like the fact that this variant of the seat has more legroom than on the Dreamliners, I like the alcohol they serve at the bar, solid A2. Next up we have Qatar's A350s, which feature either the coveted Q suites or the same seats we've seen on the last two planes. Neither of these two are even mildly bad, and these days you're more likely to get the Q-suites anyways, especially on longer flights. In Q-suites, all the seats have very high walls and doors, providing lots of privacy. The middle seats even open up to a four-person living room situation, where you can vibe it out with your in-laws. The adjacent suites can also combine their seats into a double bed, so you can get busy making children to appease said in-laws. I would put this product into A tier given the fact that you might find yourself in the older seats, but if you do your research well, that should be highly unlikely. 
so it edges its way into S. The 777s from the Peninsula's airline are a little bit of a different story. You can once again find yourself in the amazing Q-suites, this time around with even more room than on the A350s. Or you can find yourself sitting in a D-tier deserving 222 layout. I guess I could just average them out into B-tier, but on this aircraft type, Qatar has a tendency to make last-minute equipment changes, so the trauma of expecting this, only to get this, means that it goes here. I almost forgot that Qatar also has A330s. I've never flown on this before, I barely even remember that it existed, and for good reason, because they use the same 222 layout that we've seen in all the other 330s in this video. And just like those, it definitely deserves to be in D. Aww. Moving on, here's an underrated airline, Oman. Now they fly both the Dreamliner and the A330, both of which have the same seats as Gulf Air does on their Dreamliners, and if you need a refresher, those were fantastic. While Oman Air does have a first class, I don't actually think it's worth the money. Not because their first class sucks or anything, but rather because their business is so good. You get your menu in a leather binder, your food doesn't come on a tray, instead each plate is placed individually, and you get pajamas, a service standard that is closer to first than it is to business. The only other product on this list that has a comparable seat and similar service would be the Q-Suites. So just like that, both of Oman Air's planes earn an S tier. This does mean that Oman Air's A330 is the only one to have made it out of D tier, and by quite a margin as well. Alright, last airline on the list, let's talk about Etihad. Right off the bat, I'm going to eliminate the 777s from the major leagues, this is what the cabin looks like, and this is where it goes. The 787s and A380s on Etihad have what they call the studio suites. It is rather weird and has a color palette not too dissimilar from intestinal regurgitant but you do get a fair amount of room in a soft and spacious seat. The food is never not good on Etihad, and their staff are probably the most professional on this list. So I'm gonna put both aircraft into B tier. Finally, the A350s on Etihad have the ubiquitous Super Diamond seats once again, this time with a door. I really like this seat, but do take it with a grain of salt because I have been finding this quite a bit over the last couple of months. It's not as comfortable to sleep in as the Omani planes, nor is it as private as Qatar's Q-suites. But I do just kind of like it. There's a lot of storage, and it's just very elegantly done. It's very well thought out, everything is within reach, and it's very natural to look out of the windows from a seating position. If it were up to me, I would put it into A tier. And it is up to me, so into A tier it goes. Alright, so here's a tier list. Do you guys agree with where I put each plane? Let me know what you think, and also let me know which region's airlines you'd like to see me rank next. Thanks once again to Babbel for sponsoring this video, but until the next time, safe travels.